I set your shoes on fire. All of them. They're in the trash can by the rental office. They're still smoldering. The side of the plastic bin has melted away, and Stuart in apartment 413 has already made four calls to the super. He didn't answer because I locked him in his bathroom, because I didn't want the fire put out just yet. It's nice, the smell of burning. I used to not like it, as it reminded me of a particularly bad moment in my early life. But that was so many years ago, and now I enjoy the smell of burning. Burning anything. Rubber, cloth, skin in small amounts. Hair, definitely hair. Even wood. A fireplace on a cool winter night. A campfire on a warm summer night. A house as a family of four flees, leaving behind everything they've ever owned to be consumed by flames. Plus, there's true beauty in black ash quivering around bright orange edges. It's art, Craig. I know you appreciate art. Also, the birds are alarmed, and I find that funny. You missed your date tonight because you couldn't find your shoes, which is why I'm telling you now that they're on fire in a quickly melting plastic bin. Then when you tried to rush to a shoe store, your car wouldn't start because someone broke in and jammed glass shards into the ignition. Or at least that's what the locksmith said when she came to investigate the problem. Who would do something like that? You wanted her professional opinion. She only shrugged and said she'd have to replace the ignition switch, which would take a couple of days and cost $400. I suppose I could have used the glass shards to slash your tires to keep you from your date. It would have been cheaper for you, but it wouldn't have been as beautiful. I don't think you noticed the perfect arc of blood splatter across the floor mat when you cut your hand on the ignition. You screamed in pain, ignoring the beauty of your own nature. So please take a moment to look out the window by the shower and appreciate the artwork I have created. I call it Craig's Impertinence. Multimedia, plastic, gasoline, and shoes. Ah, but you're too busy moping. You've been standing in that shower for 10 minutes. I know, because I'm in here with you. A faceless old woman inches from your neck. You would feel my breath if I still breathed. I think it would be upsetting for you if you turned around. Better to let the water run over you. Better not to see. You haven't even touched the soap. You look pathetic. Why? Because you missed a date with a woman who was pretty and shared similar loves and seemed genuinely interested in you? Or because when you went to try to reschedule with her, she accused you of texting her an inappropriate photo when in fact you did no such thing? You can't hear me. These are rhetorical questions anyway. I don't need a response. You wouldn't even know how to respond to me. After all, you don't know I'm here. Even after that one day a year ago when you passed by the living room and half noticed the strange new chandelier hanging from the ceiling. The one made from the twisted limbs and neck of an old woman, contorted into a shape like a spider. And then you thought, wait, what did I just see? And you backed up to find that the hanging old woman was gone. Almost certain she was never there. Probably you imagined her. I can see why you're upset. The woman you did not go on a date with is too. No one wants to have a first date cancel on them, and then have that same date inexplicably text them a photo of a raccoon having its intestines gnawed out by a coyote. I mean, I would want that. But I've never really been into dating. Although it is true that once I was deeply in love. So I can only assume most women would not like that kind of behavior. I forgot to mention, she received a text from you while you were trying to get your car fixed that included a photo of a coyote devouring a raccoon. The coyote's fur was a glistening red about the mouth, its eyes golden like a cornfield. The raccoon's neck is clearly broken, and its organs are pink and gray. I'm sure she was disgusted, but honestly, she's made of similar materials. So are you, Craig. I'm not sorry I sent her that photo using your phone. And you shouldn't be either. It was a good photo, a discomforting reminder of Snowden's secret that man is matter. Did you ever read Catch-22? It's a funny and sad book about moral hypocrisy and self-interest. My favorite part is how cold Snowden got when his small intestine unraveled from beneath his flak jacket. That's not a spoiler because that book's been out for decades, and you should have read it by now. Plus, you can't even hear me.